Hello everybody, I am Developer Relations Engineer David Jones Gilardi, and right now I'd like to show you what I consider both a tip and a trick in Langflow when using the session ID. Um, so I just released a, a video just the other day uh, on my CodeBeast app, and I kind of briefly talked about um, the session ID in there, but I didn't really get into detail. So what I want to do is just take a couple minutes, we're going to go into this, because this, I believe, is probably one of my favorite features, even though it's a little hidden and we have documentation on it, it's just a little hidden. So why don't we go ahead and take a look at what it does and then how you can use it. So for one, just to kind of, you know, showcase real quick, if I go into my playground, this is actually um, uh, the, the length of flow that I'm using for my code beast app. It could be anything really, uh, but notice here in the left-hand side, notice how I have all these unique names. Also notice how for me, there's all of this history, all this message history, but maybe for somebody else, there's something else, right? You can see each individual user here has their own session information. And so you can see that that's the session ID that I'm talking about, but then how do you use this, right? Now, to be clear in my particular app, I'm instead of using like a generated UUID or something within my app, I am actually using these GitHub handles. It, it really depends on your particular need. But the real key is that the session ID is unique, right? As long as it's unique per user, then you'll get this really neat functionality. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this flow. We're not gonna get into the whole flow. We're gonna look at the components that actually have this like hidden session ID variable. Um, so if you take a look, now I've exposed all of my session IDs, but if you've ever gone and grabbed a chat input or a chat output uh, component uh, under the hood, it's actually there, right? It's just off by default. So usually it looks like this. Usually you see something like this, um, but it's actually there. It's just hidden, right? So I'm just gonna expose this. Now, what's super cool is that when you set the session ID in your payload, and we'll get to that in a moment, it will automatically apply it across any of the components that use it. So in the case of what I'm doing here in this app, not only do I wanna use it for my input and output, but you see that I have this chat memory component and a message history component. In my particular case, what I'm looking to do is I wanna store off those session IDs and their details in an external database. Now, if I didn't choose an external database, it would actually just store it in the local Langflow table. So if you didn't know this, in Langflow, by default, there's an SQLite database under the hood that's actually storing all things like your message history and such. But I know me personally, um, I like one to see the data in my own external database, but also, you know, SQLite isn't going to scale that great. Um, I know that if I'm putting stuff in, let's say, Redis or Astra or something, it's going to scale just fine, especially if things get really big, right? Um, so that's one reason why I like to use it. So there is memory underneath the hood. It is being stored off. It is persistent. It's not just in like, it's not ephemeral. It's not in memory uh, or only in memory, but you have this external memory option. So the same thing applies though. So notice I have the session ID there. I have the session ID there. Now, again, I've just exposed them so you can see it, but you don't need to do that. As long as I set that session ID in my payload, these components will automatically use them. Right, so let's just go ahead and look at this flow. So I've got some handle that comes in. I've got some memory I'm referencing an external database. I'm then checking in the message history. If we go all the way to the end, you'll see I have my chat output with the session ID, but the real key one here is that message store component because it also has it. So if I now start storing messages per a session ID, then they will automatically, when hooked up to the chat memory uh, component, will automatically start persisting that data. So now you can see that for every one of these, I have individual session IDs, and then I have the data that I'm storing off. Now, in my particular case, I'm actually just using this to store the output. You could do the whole um, chat history if you wanted. I'm not doing that in this particular case because I don't need that. Um, but the point is, is that all you have to do, right, to make this work, and this is my favorite part of this feature, because the session ID is already there, once you have these components wired up in your code, you just add session ID to the payload. That's it. And then this will automatically start working, right? I, I finally, I, like I said, this is kind of like an unsung feature. Um, I use it all of the time in like almost all of my apps because having the ability to split out my different users into different sessions with their own history is so super important. Number one, from, if you think about it, 
the amount of tokens and like model confusion, right? If I just throw everything into the single session and I've got a hundred users, after a while, the model's gonna have a hard time differentiating between who's who. But with these different sessions, I have no problem with that at all. Anyway, that's it. I just wanted to point out how to use that session ID, how cool it is, something maybe to try out in your own applications. With that, everybody, take care, happy coding.